All right, guys, I know I've been promising you guys a rasterization video for quite some time now, but guess what? Now is the time. I'm confident in my ability to rasterize a photo and to show you guys all the intricacies in a way that you guys understand. So without further ado, like, comment, subscribe. Let's jump into it. We're using Affinity Photo, Affinity Photo to rasterize our images. And before we get started, let me just explain to you what the purpose of me showing you how to rasterize is. Okay, so we're printing out artwork on our white toner printers mostly, right? Pay attention to this if you want to really get into white toner printers and take printers and take advantage of the full capabilities of the white toner transfer, um, printers. But I'm talking fast because I'm excited about this. So let me slow it down just a little bit. Okay, so we're printing on our DTG printers. We're also printing on our uh, sublimation printers. We're printing on our DTF printers and we screen printing some of us so we can all take advantage of this skill right here, especially mainly if we're printing on black shirts, all right? Rasterizing the images, what that does is that takes away all of the color the black color that's in that design so that instead of printing ink onto the black part, it'll use the shirt as the black. And that makes sense because especially when you're dealing with white toner, everybody always complains about the feel of the garment, the feel of the garment because it's so much ink being laid down. Now what would happen if you could rasterize your photo, you would add holes inside of that design and then if you can knock out the black, it would take away all the black areas in that shirt of that image so that um, wherever the black is, instead of it laying down black ink on a black shirt, that part of the image would be transparent and the black shirt would look like it would the, it's, it's the black ink, if that makes sense. And anyway, let's jump into it using Affinity Photo. Let's rasterize our first image. Let's jump into the program. I'm going to go ahead and click on Affinity Photo and it's going to open it up right here and I'm going to click on open right and I'll tell you why I clicked on open in a second find my image and I'm going to press open alright now the reason why I did that and I didn't open up a new document is because now that I press open it created the document size relative to my picture size alright and so now when I go, when I finally I'm done with this whole image, and I export it. I won't have any image at the front and any image on the side. It will just be strictly my image size, and there's no document to deal with. Because when you export a document, you got headroom and you got to resize the document if you don't want any headroom and any side room. So I like to open up the image so it can, so my um, my document size can be the size that can, can take the size of the actual image. All right, so right, right now my units of measures are pixels. I'm going to hit inches because I like to work with inches. And okay, so now I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to do a few things here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the DPI. So my document, normally it goes to 300, it defaults to 300 DPI. So I'm going to go to document resize and I'm going to change it to 1200 DPI. And I'm gonna have make sure the nearest neighbor is clicked on and make sure resample is on and I'm going to resize that image and it made it so there's more DPIs, there's more dots per square inch on my image. Alright, so that size image normally like I said opened up to 300 dots per square inch and because I'm manipulating the photo I'm gonna be sampling and rasterizing and adjusting I hit, uh, I changed the amount of dots per square inch in there so the photo has more information in there, okay? Now let's kind of get into the fun part a little bit. Let's start the manipulation of this image and the rasterization of this image. So I'm going to click on here to, um, I'm going to unlock the image right there. And now I'm going to make the necessary changes that I need to do for my image for what I'm doing, all right? Uh, I'll tell you guys what I'm doing. I'm duplicating my image right now. And the reason why I duplicated the image is because once we do our rasterization and we suck out all the black in the image, the bottom is going to serve as kind of like a kind of like the um, 
the thing that the image sees other than, other than that if you don't have that image and you if you don't have the bottom image if you don't duplicate the image and you export it out there's not going to be anything that you export it doesn't make any sense but just trust me I've done this over and I've been practicing this and this is how you have to do it all right so now you don't you guys don't have to follow this specific step but I know I want my image to be black and white so because I'm putting on a black belly canvas shirt and so I'm going to convert my image to black and white, but you guys can skip the step. You guys can keep your image color if you want to. And in future videos, I'm going to show you guys how you can rasterize certain elements and you can lower the opacity of certain inks and certain elements and stuff like that. But for this, for what I'm doing right now, we're going to do baby steps and we're going to do one thing at a time. So right now I'm going to convert my image to black and white right here where it says um, adjustments. I'm going to go black and white right here and I noticed in my image it lost some of the vibrancy in the clouds and stuff like that so I'm just gonna try to bring some of that cloud back um, dial back that cyan a little bit um, and I'm just gonna adjust it till I find something that I like right here bring down bring some of those dark so we can get some of that skin color back alright when we change it black and white so you could you could do stuff like that alright boom and when you get something that you like, you just close it out. All right. So now we got that. Um, it's separate. I'm going to go ahead and merge that down. Mask to below is what it's called. Mask to below. And you'll see that instead of two layers right here, now we have one layer. All right. So that's the first part of our process. Like I said, you guys can skip that black and white portion that I just did if you want to. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and here's the fun part. I'm going to click on live filters and I'm going to go all the way down to convert this thing to half tones. All right, so click on half tone and boom, there's my dots right there. All right, now for you guys who want to keep the dots, you can go ahead and dial up the contrast all the way so it adds more dots. And then you can go ahead and adjust this right here to something where it looks like you can still see the faces and you can still see what you guys want. All right. For me, I'm going to change my dots to lines because I want lines. And I'm going to change my lines to going from going down and up, from going horizontal to going vertical. All right. So 90 degrees right here. All right. And I'm going to adjust my contrast back down because I don't want uh, so many lines but I want enough lines and I'm gonna adjust my cell size to the point where I see an image that I like alright so this looks good I can still see everybody's faces I can still see the sky a little bit I can, you know I, I, I got pretty much what I want out of the what I'm doing right here in the image I'm gonna go ahead and X this out right here and now for the final part of what we are doing right here I'm gonna go ahead and click on this layer right here that has our grayscale image and I'm gonna go ahead and rasterize that image right here so I'm gonna go up here to where it says layers and I'm going to go ahead and hit rasterize to mask when I hit rasterize to mask it remove all the black from our image so this way um, the shirt will actually serve as the black all right, so if you guys want to see what I'm talking about, I could actually go ahead. It's not going to make sense right right not now yet. If I go ahead and select a square, I'm going to go ahead and change the fill of that square to, to a red, as a matter of fact. Let's change it to a red, all right? And then I'm going to go ahead and drag a square over top of this. And you see the squares at the top. I'm going to go ahead and drag it all the way to the bottom layer. And you go, wait, nope. It filled, it went on top of that layer, all the way to the bottom layer. And then if I drag it in between here, you guys can see, actually you can't see anything. Anyway, scratch that last part, scratch that last part. Let's go ahead and export this out and let's print it out and show you what you got. <laughs> trying to be fancy guys, don't know how to work this all the way, but guys, you see our rasterized image right here. Let's go ahead and export this. So file, export, Still learning, guys. Still learning. PNG. Go ahead and let this calculate it all out. And you see our image right there. I'm going to go ahead and hit export. And then I'm going to save this as something I remember. Rasterized um, siblings shirt. All right. I'm going to save that to my flash drive. And I'm going to, I got too many eyes right here in siblings. And then I'm going to press save. 
All right. And now we can get over to the white toner, I mean to the DTF printer and print this baby out. So right here in our software for the Prestige A3 Plus R, I went ahead and I, I imported our images, I set it up and I sent it to print. Um, in the future, I will be doing a video showing you guys how to set this up. Matter of fact, this week that video is coming up, but this is not that video, so stay tuned for that. Um, I know somebody asked for a video on how to set up the Prestige A3 Plus R to print using the software and stuff like that. So that video is coming this week, so stay tuned for that. But right now, I just wanted to print this out and show you guys it printing, all right? So here we are. Prestige A3 Plus R is printing out that image right there. And you guys see um, very, very clearly right there where the black and the outline is missing from our image right there. And all of the area that is missing right there is going to be shirt, all right? So it's just going to lay down the white ink on top of that area that has the actual black ink on top that's not shirt all right so um this will probably be better done in a case where it was uh, a color image a color image probably would have did this a lot more justice but you can see the prestige a3 plus r laying down the white on the cloud areas so you get some some of those black and white clouds in there and yeah the areas like i said where you guys see the uh, siblings right there being written out where it's kind of like missing. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but it's it's missing the uh, color. So, yeah. Gonna go ahead and pre-press my shirt right there for a few seconds. Pre-press the shirt. All right, raise it up, got the moisture out of it. Gonna go ahead and put our image onto the shirt right here. Four fingers down like we normally do. Good, get, get that good placement going all right get that good old placement going and just imagine if this was white tone or anything like that how how this would come out all right so got that in there now we're going to press it down 15 second press allenaway.com for your transfers i'm not going to half tone it but we can discuss it maybe i could have tone your image for you and get, get it rasterized for you. All right, so now that this is done, boom, opens up. Now we're going to wait till it cools off and then we're gonna peel the transfer off. Let me wait till it cools off. I'm gonna put it on something nice and cool so it can cool down. All right, let it cool down over here on this, on that platen over there. As a matter of fact, this one's cold. Let me move it over here. All right, so now we are going to flip our shirt to the opposite side got our transfer nice and cool and I'm just gonna roll it off in a motion and uh, uh, like take it easy with it because certain areas of the design don't have as much um, of the white powder on it the, the, the uh, glue on it to adhere to the shirt because it's kind of transparent on certain areas so it's gonna be kind of hard of a transfer to peel off so you kind of got to like do this carefully when you do this this part right here all right, that's uh, one of the downsides of doing it this way um, when you with transfers. When you're doing it screen print, it's fine, um, but right now it seems to be okay. I'm having a little bit of difficulty right here where there's less glue with the image coming off, but overall, you guys can see that it's coming off pretty good. You just gotta be careful, like I said, right here. Right here. Yep, little bit getting stuck right there, but overall we are looking pretty okay. All right, so I'm being really careful, a little bit more careful peeling this off than I normally would with a regular transfer. And see right here, a lot of the glue stayed on because there's lower transparency where there's less clouds. All right, so let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So right here in our image, you can see where not all of the transfer came off. And that's because in this area, there was less transparency, right? We vector, we um, rasterized it. So on the transfer, you can actually see where there's still a little bit of image left, all right? But that's okay because when you play around with this right here, in the areas where there's less transparency, 
it's going to be difficult for that glue to transfer that image all the way over. All right, so that's the, that's the problem you're going to run into. When you, like, you, like I said, when you screen print it, it's fine. White toner, great. But certain methods, like this is all, this is all, you know, we're all playing with this stuff and trying to figure out the best me best method. But to me, this image feels really, really smooth. But I'm going to um, press it one more time to get rid of that smooth feel because that's what we're supposed to do. So let's press it again. Press it one more time right here. Get rid of that smoothness and make it embed into the fabric right there. our final image it got nice and softer and that upper part right there gave it like a vintage type of look doesn't even look bad at all guys feels good sounds good let me know what you guys think in the comments what do you guys think I think on this black shirt right here the way I did it I wanted it to look like it was kind of like something that you would see in stores. So that's why I created it like this, guys. That's why I made it black and white and everything. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Did I achieve it? What do you think? All right, as you guys can see, we got our shirt on right now. I think I might have needed extra large, but it's okay. I like wearing schmedium. It's like, no, this is large, guys. But um, shirt looks great. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I think it came out phenomenal. You guys saw it from start to finish, how I rasterized this, how I converted to black and white, which you guys don't necessarily have to do. You can keep your images color. But like I said, in videos coming up, I'll show you guys if you have if you have your artwork created in that specific program and if you have all the layers, you can do this to different layers, right? So like if one layer has all black in it, you can totally remove that layer. Um, you can lower the opacity on another layer that might have another color on it. You can put the effect with the dots or either uh, a slant going, uh, slices going in a specific direction on another layer and have a bunch of different effects in your image that will make that shirt very, very smooth. So just imagine if I had lines going through all the red, right, in the sunglasses or something like that. And then I had dots going around the perimeter that's in blue or something like that. And then the black is removed. That's plenty of space um, that it's creating where the ink is not going to lay down in ink um, where those little dots and slashes are or whatever, if that makes any sense to you guys. But so let me know if you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more content like this, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Let me know what you guys think about this shirt, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see it. Stop playing. Peace. Turn up that, crank it up. I listen to the rest when you're rockin' with the best, baby.